Hey everybody, Wildman West here, and welcome to day 15 of What's Your Poison's 24 Beers of Christmas. Yesterday we had a very naughty and tasty beer. So, I'm gonna pop this open and hopefully we have another great one. Ooh, from Art History Brewing in Geneva, Illinois, we have 60 Shilling Scotch Ale. All right, here. Oh, a very light 4.7% one. All right. It says, the brewer's notes are a malt-focused Scottish ale with flavors of toasted bread and biscuits, Golden Promise Malt, and UK Boogle Hops. So, I, I'm, I'm excited because we've had a red ale but I haven't had a good Scottish ale in a while. I think the last time I had a Scottish ale was from Three Floyds with Robert the Bruce. And I'm looking forward to one from the Illinois side. Ooh, nice, rich, slightly amber, slightly golden color. Very traditional for a Scottish Isle. Ooh, very malty. Very malty indeed. I'm not sure what UK Fugel hops are, but I'm interested to see what we get. Very malty. Slightly sweet. Getting the biscuit, almost a hint of raisin on there. Maybe that's what those Fugel hops are. I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of a hybrid between a Scottish ale and hmm, that biscuit. It's it's almost kind of dark. It's it's very it's like almost a hybrid of a Scottish ale and a English mild. A little sweet. So this one I'm gonna say is nice. This one's rather nice. I, I like this one. I mean, this is definitely one that I could. Uh, Drink. I mean, this is definitely the porch and patio pounder uh, percentage. So yeah, I I like this one. Art history, well done. Now we move on to the movie review of this episode. Today we're going to be talking about a newer film. We're going to be talking about 2022's Violent Night. Okay, I have been waiting to watch this one. I'm a little late to the game, but you know better late than never. So I don't want to give too much away on this one because since it is fairly new, I want you to see it for yourself, but I will give kind of an idea of what the movie is about. So our story begins with a man dressed as Santa in a pub in England, having some pints, a little knackered, a little, little three sheets to the wind, talking about how he's getting a little tired of how greedy people can be and how Christmas has lost his meaning and maybe it's it's time to retire. And a Santa's helper and the bartender are sitting there thinking, what's going on with this guy? He goes up on the roof, he disappears. When you find out it actually is Santa Claus himself. Now we fast forward to a divorced couple that is taking their daughter to see the rest of the family at the mansion estate. The husband is not very happy about how the life has gone with his family because his mother has been kind of a, how do I put this, overbearing and basically dangling the money over the kids. Meanwhile, while we're figuring this out with their little Christmas party with the family, a group of terrorists know how much money that this family has. They plan this heist where they're going to break into the house and kill everybody and take the money. Meanwhile, the divorced couple with their daughter, they try to bring back the spirit of Christmas in her because she didn't get to go to see Santa at the mall with her dad. He gives her this walkie-talkie that is supposedly magical and can do a two-way direct contact with Santa. Eventually, Santa gets involved in the situation. He finds a radio on one of the terrorists. All of a sudden, he starts hearing what she has to say, and they find a way to save the family. That's pretty much the movie in a nutshell. I don't want to give too much away because this movie, I got to admit, I was skeptical at first, 
but at the same time, I was not disappointed. It's time to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this film. I want to start off with what I don't like, and there's not much. I mean, I will say they did take a lot of liberties with a lot of references to other Christmas films. However, this becomes that double-edged sword where it worked. It actually worked. They made references to Home Alone. They made references to Die Hard. They made references to a lot of things, but not like blatantly in some aspects, but in some they did, and you kind of go, oh, okay, I see where this movie's going. But it does flip on a 180 to the things that I do like about this film. Now, when it comes to star power in this, there's not a lot of big names. I would say the two that really stand out for people that have been in the business or have notoriety is David Harbour, better known as Hopper from Stranger Things playing Santa, and then we have Beverly D'Angelo playing the matriarch of the dysfunctional family. And both of them do a great job, as well as the rest of the ensemble cast. I also have to backtrack when I talk about the ensemble cast, I forgot one person. John Leguizamo plays the head terrorist in this, and as much as you want to say what he did in movies like The Pest or Super Mario Brothers, he's done a great amount of things other than those. I mean, hey, he was clown in Spawn, and you know what? This performance of him in, for this, I mean, literally, it was clown, but it was literally like a terrorist. And yeah, I, I would say it's a mixture between clown and Hans Gruber and from Die Hard. I mean, literally, it was great. Now, when I say it took a lot of liberties on a lot of other Christmas references and Christmas movie references, the best way I could describe this movie is if you took Home Alone, Die Hard, some of the Marvel films, especially Deadpool, and Conan the Barbarian, and you put them in a blender, and this is what you get. And also you get a very fresh backstory of where Santa Claus came from, why he is how he is, and why he does what he does now, and what he has to do in order to save not just the family, but Christmas itself. Another thing that I liked about it, as I mentioned about the tropes, there are moments where they set booby traps a la, you know, Home Alone, but they go from funny to, oh my god, that just happened, and somebody died. And you just sit there just like, you just, you're shocked and horrified, but you're laughing hysterically. And I just, I love that. I also love the fact that there are moments in this film that even though this is a dark action comedy, there is some heartfelt sentiments, especially when Santa is trying to dispose of the terrorists, and he has his little moments of, I miss my wife, I, I miss Mrs. Claus, I just want to see her one last time in case I die. And it's just, you're just like, oh my gosh, there, there, there are some really heartfelt sentiment moments in this film. Now I'm going to go ahead and grade. You know, I, I want to give this a perfect score, but I'm going to be unbiased. I'm going to give this one an A-, minus because, as I mentioned when it comes to taking liberties, they did do a couple things, and especially near the end, there's a moment where Santa's having a moment of whether he's going to live or die. It reminds me of a Marvel film. Not gonna name names, but if you legit put them side by side, it's almost a parody. But at the same time, the movie it's parodying is kind of a parody of comic book films. Wink, wink. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you didn't agree with everything I said, whether on the beer or on the movie, you can leave a thumbs down. I totally understand. Otherwise, make sure you share on social media, but most importantly, let's keep that algorithm flowing just like these beers. Push that little red button. Don't forget to ring the bell for instant notifications. Also, make sure you check out my boy Hefe on Beer You, Beer Me on all social platforms. You'll be glad you did. Until then, I'm Wild Mayor West, 
and I'll see you tomorrow for day 16 of Watch Your Poisons 24 Beers of Christmas. Take care, stay safe, happy holidays, cheers.